friends, I hope that uh, you have had a wonderful week. And I hope you're looking forward to just as wonderful a weekend, which may include family worship and church attendance. My name is Jerry Ogles. I will be your, your, your host for this study tonight on the 39 Articles of Religion, which will be Article 8. This is sponsored by the Anglican Orthodox Communion Worldwide. Let us begin by examining that article. It's found in the Book of Common Prayer in the back of the book entitled Articles of Religion. Article 8 entitled Of the Creeds, and I read, The Nicene Creed, and that which is commonly called the Apostles' Creed, ought thoroughly to be received and believed, for they may be proved by the most certain warrants of Holy Scripture. End of reading. If we go to the, to the Bible itself, go and uh, look at the Gospel of St. John, chapter 17, verse 11, and I hope you will read with me through these things, uh, we will find the, uh, the Lord speaking these words in the garden in his prayer of Gethsemane uh, just before his crucifixion. And I read it, the words of Christ. And now I am no more in the world, but these are in the world, and I come to thee. Holy Father, keep through thine own name those whom thou hast given me, that they may be one as we are one. End of reading. How can we as Christian believers be one when we have such a diverse number of denominations, all claiming to be the one true church of Christ? What would unite us across all denominational lines? Instead of emphasizing those things that divide us, such as manner of worship or denomination-specific issues, let us focus on those things that unite us all in Christ. What are those bonds that join us as one in Jesus Christ? First, it is the Word of God as translated in its purity without politically correct emendations of man. And we see those in, uh, emendations being presented in new versions of the Bible where entire verses are left out and meanings of words been changed. Secondly, it is the manner in which Scripture is correctly interpreted. How can scriptural interpretation be reduced to a common understanding among all believers? The answer to that question reposes in the biblical doctrines undiluted taught by the church from the time of Christ until our own day. This defines the church Catholic, or as many prefer, universal. Those doctrinal issues believed and held in faith by our early church to the day of the Reformation to find the true religion of the Church of Christ. That is the purpose of the creeds proclaimed in Article 8 of the 39 Articles of Religion. The Continental and English Reformations of the 16th century restored the ancient faith of its biblical foundations in the Word of God clearly revealed. At each service of our Reformed Anglican worship, we repeat each of the Apostles or Nicene Creed. These are repeated by each in communal worship as establishing the unity of the Church. Those fundamental doctrines and those principles that must unite all Christians into that oneness of faith to which Jesus referred at Gethsemane are what we're discussing tonight general agreement to these fundamental uh, biblical principles of the primitive church unite the entire church around the world in one each worship day one faith one belief in christ as proved in holy writ since our anglican worship is uh, communal in nature we recite these creeds to prepare our hearts in understanding of our common faith and belief in worship let us, for the sake of brevity, examine the Apostles' Creed, a historic confession of the Church across all lines of denominational faith. If the provision included in the Apostles' Creed 
are based on the elementary precepts of holy writ, which cannot be questioned by any who profess Christ as Lord and Savior, then it is something that we should hold in common as an expression of our faith. Let us look at the Apostles' Creed in its entirety. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Now, I would like to ask you, what parts of the Apostles' Creed would you disagree with? There's biblical foundation and proof for each one, each comment. Uh, let's look at two common objections. One is, if you take exception to the term Catholic, which actually means universal, uh, which is the one holy universal church, not Roman Catholic, you may substitute that word universal in the stead of the term Catholic because it has the same meaning. If you don't like the term hell, which is actually Hades in the Greek, we look at First uh, Peter 3, 18 through 20. For Christ also hath once suffered for our sins, the just for the unjust, that he might bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh, but quickened by the Spirit, by which also he went and preached unto the spirits in prison, which sometime were disobedient, when once the long-suffering of God waited in the days of Noah, while the ark was a preparing, wherein few, that is, eight souls were saved by water. End of reading. It's important for us to look at the creeds. You know, in our church, around the world, every worship service, we are all saying the same thing. We're all agreeing on these fundamental doctrines. First of all, that God is our Father, and that Jesus Christ is his Son and that he lived a sinless life, that he was born of a virgin, that he was uh, crucified by Pontius Pilate, that he was dead and buried, and he arose on the third day and ascended into heaven. We believe those things, don't we? If we don't believe those, what is the, uh, how are we united in one in Christ? Now, I agree, there are some churches that do not believe in the Trinity. There are some churches that do not believe in hell. There are some churches that do not believe really in an afterlife. The evidence is in the way they preach and the manner in which they preach. There are some that do not even believe the Holy Scriptures themselves. But we do. And we confess those things in our church just to bring us into one mind. It's, a, it's like a collect. It, it brings us into one frame of mind on the truth of God at the beginning of each worship service. So let's remember this. And if you have any questions, please address them to our national headquarters, and I will be happy to respond to any questions concerning the validity of these, uh, these creeds. God bless you, and we will see you on our next meeting. Goodbye.